what's funny is that you're known for for that frame in the, the bachelor literally history, where you're it. going like the in, that yeah and it's perfect. Hey guys, welcome to Tea Time with Ashley I. Today I am here with Olivia, Hi. aka the villain of Ben's season. Yay. But why, Olivia? Why were you the I'm villain? I'm not a villain. No, just, you just, just shut not. up, everyone. I'm not. <laughs> How tired of you are or you I? about hearing <laughs> that you are a bachelor villain? I mean, it's a term to me that is used like so loosely nowadays. Yeah. I think I was much better than a villain. I was more of like an awkward turtle. Um, obsessed. Obsessed, um, as I have yeah, been guilty of. Yeah, yeah. Like, villain is so dumb because I was never like, oh yes, I can't wait to really make people cry and no. No. So. I said during your season, I was like, I don't know why people are using the term villain for Olivia. She's like kind of self-sabotaging. I it was all you me. know, yeah. I was a villain towards myself. Exactly. But towards no one else. Right. Like, you were never doing anything to the I other was just girls. Destroying me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I never exactly. really thought of it that way. Yeah. I, I have screwed up a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, Olivia. Sorry. But you're right. Like, I'm okay now though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a villain anymore, people. So, Olivia, how did you go from being bachelor villain to uh, successful podcaster? Um, well, it's actually a funny story. I was doing someone else's podcast mm -hmm. at CBS Radio in New York, and they came in. Um, the salespeople came in. I guess I don't even know. It was someone high high up in the chain. Um, said, you know, you're really good at this. You're good at talking. You have a really low voice, which is needed for radio mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, let's let's talk about maybe doing a show or looking for a New York podcaster. And so we had a meeting and I was thinking like, how can I embrace the mouth finally? Mm -hmm. Like, how can I make it a thing? So then we went back and forth and finally decided on mouthing off on CBS radio. And like my picture is the big mouth. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have a portion of every podcast where we like mouth off. Um, so it's fun. And I, it took me a while to kind of rid the like villain image, um, but now I feel like I'm kind of embracing it a little bit more. It took me a while. Yeah. Your villainism was really you being just like open yeah. and saying too much. So <laughs> mouthing off makes perfect sense. And I say too much on my podcast. It's okay. fine. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm very open. I like to talk about, I'm, I'm all about reality TV. I like to talk about my experience. I like to ask other people how their experience relates to mine. If they got cyberbullied, like every, it's funny to learn that every reality TV star goes through the same thing, mm -hmm. and we don't know. We feel like we're alone. At least I felt like Bachelor Nation. I was the only person who ever got hate, mm -hmm. and then I've sat down with so many people who are like, "No, I've also gotten death threats and you know this and that." And I'm like, "Oh God, I feel so much better now." <laughs> you're known for for that frame in the, the Bachelor literally, history that's where you're it. going like, the in, that, yeah. And, and it's perfect. People ask me all the time, like, did that hurt? Did you know you were doing it? It didn't hurt. I, I can't, and actually, like, you know this, that scene could have been anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, it might have been me actually being excited about something, or it could have just been me, like, uh, uh, who knows? But they found it, and they used it over and over and over again. And now the mouth is, is legendary. It's I amazing. Think. I made the mouth. Great again. I'm sure you probably got some DMs from guys maybe, about the size maybe, of your mouth. Uh, yeah. Oh, mo mostly like t uh, when I go on Tinder and Bumble, I can't do that anymore because you know they just notice me. Mm -hmm. They either say, um, you know, is your mouth really that big, and then they'll make a sexual joke about blowjobs, um, or they'll say, do you really have fat toes? Can I see your fat toes? You're someone bringing up said all I these things. Fat toes. Yeah. So I, then I, I I don't have fat toes, so that I can answer. But okay, but wait, I'm confused because I thought you said, did they talk about my toes? They they no no they did talk about my toes. But why? Because they had to find something to hate on me for. Was it your ankles? You said like my ankles, ankles, my toes, my boobs, my mouth, everything. That's so random because I never knew you on the show, you know. Maybe if I lived in the Bachelor mansion with you, I'd hate you too. I, but like, know, I, I, I mean, people you're just like I, I podcasted with someone recently who said like, "Do you understand? Can you understand from their perspective why they didn't love you?" And I'm like, "Absolutely, a hundred, a hundred percent." I'm not sitting here saying I'm perfect and I can't understand why people, you know, didn't like me. No, that's not the case. My my thing is, you know, you can attack me, attack me, attack me to my face, no problem. Say you don't like me to my face, but no one said anything to my face. It mm -hmm. was all on those little private interviews when when they were just going hammer time on me. And so that was why when I'm filming, I didn't even have an issue with anyone. There mm -hmm. was never a moment 
where it was like we were fighting. But then afterwards, I was like, ooh, okay. I That's see how so it goes. Crazy. So that was where I really like started to feel a lot of, you know, ha hatred basically for some of those people was because I was like, wow, it wasn't like that in person. And then it switched up. But I also think they targeted you because that season probably didn't have an actual villain. It was it was a weak or like weak villain season, I would say. Right. Like no one like everyone got along really well. There was a solid group of friends where you know no one would say a bad thing about those people and then there were like the outsiders. It was more like outsiders than villains. Okay. It was like very clicky. Who are the season. outsiders with you? Me, Kay me and Kayla. Oh. Jubilee was like kind of a forced outsider, but mm -hmm. she she did that on her own. Me yeah. and her did it on our own. We didn't want to like hang out with people. Um, but yeah, me and Kayla towards the end were like the definite outsiders that mm -hmm. were not in the clique. Yeah. You and I probably have very similar two-on-ones. Yeah. Yes, we are both left stranded somewhere, <laughs> which is like definitely the theme now that we've created. Oh yeah. But yeah. we also probably were paired up with somebody you that thought, we thought, oh, he's definitely gonna eliminate her yeah. and I'm definitely safe. Definitely. And I did feel that, that way. way. I did feel that way. And it was never, the whole date was was really quick and, and fast and it was like horrible weather. So the vibes were just off as it was. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I went into it thinking like, I think this is gonna go well. Like mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna get the rose. It's not gonna be like the greatest date ever, obviously, but maybe the next week I'll get one. Yeah. Which happened the opposite for Emily, that mm -hmm. she got it and then the next week she got her one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I should have known that it was probably time at that point. I was just hanging on to fumes. I yeah. was hanging on to anything I could. But I was also like, I've never even been on a date with this guy. Right. And I... Here we are talking about hometowns. At that point, we had been talking, at least saying, yeah, like, where do you live, yeah. where do your parents live? And I'm sitting here thinking, how am I going to give you my parents' information when I've never been on a date with this guy? <laughs> wow, this is this happening? I know, that's so, so true. What was the most hurtful thing that you heard from girls in the Bachelor Mansion? Oh my god. The most hurtful thing actually was, was live, and it was at Women Tell All, when the twins are just coming at me. And I knew they were. I knew they were going to be hyenas. Um, and they're saying, you did this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. And Leah said, well, what about what you said about her? And the twins both did this and said, well, that's besides the point. And I was like, bitch, are you serious? You can say whatever you want to say and make fun of my body parts and make fun of everything about me on TV. You looked like the bully, by the way. And, but that's irrelevant. Olivia's the mean one. She did everything wrong. So for me, that was a moment where I was like, all of this is, I could, I could literally kiss their feet and they would never think I'm a good person. And at that point, I just was done. Okay. I didn't want to do a show with them and, and that was honestly the reason why. I Very was, interesting. Yeah. Like that act, that I said actual and, um, rift goes deep. I said pick and choose, them or me. I'm not doing it. Wow. If they're on. All right, so you have a broadcasting background. You know, you're a TV anchor in yeah. Virginia, and I'm from Virginia, Yay! too. Um, <laughs> I was at JMU. Yeah. Which is like three hours north of where I, you were I lived there for not a long time, but it's yeah. still like so close to my heart. I freaking right. love Virginia and Tennessee. I was on the state yeah. line. Yeah. So I love Tennessee and I love Virginia. How long were you doing anchoring? I did it for about two years. Oh, two years. Yeah. That's actually a long time. And, and that's like most of my fans are people who are asking me for broadcast advice. Yeah. And I still, by the way, Way, like I am a professional I can give advice everyone was like how how could a news anchor be that irresponsible and I'm like oh please like I can still give advice on news anchoring I did get a damn good job yeah um, I was really good at my job and but yeah after the show there was not a single station that was willing to um, pick me back up and I get it there I was a PR nightmare in their eyes um, but maybe who knows maybe ten years from now when I'm just you know, maybe all of this bachelor yeah. villainness can just leave my life, and then hopefully, then I could maybe get, get back into it. So, thank you so much for being here. Will you the come on my podcast? Yes, Monday, of course. And then I'll come back whenever. Okay. Yes, let's oh. do it. Click left to watch Ashley I and Chase talk about his bachelor family roommates? What? Or click right to watch Ashley I and Sarah V, who spills on who the best kisser in Bachelor Nation is.